Hello, this is Doctorus Newtopia, and this is the Lovolution Village Show. Lovolution is a revolution of ideas. It is a nonviolent movement to build solar topia, newtopia, anything but what we've got now. Because what we have now is a total mess. We are a species that is going extinct unless we evolve to a new consciousness that can build a new civilization. So I'm gonna to start today by a meditation for all those who have been affected by the nuclear regime. My goal is that we all reach a critical mass necessary to build a social movement to shut down all nuclear power plants, all nuclear laboratories, ever, all of the waste dumps of nuclear will be taken care of, that we will be conscious of what we're doing with this deadly poison. So I'm gonna start the slideshow by an image that I created. This is a international symbol that artists came up with. In the future, how do people know that this is a nuclear waste dump? And so this is the image that they created. And you can see the person running away from what looks like deadly rays. And we, our planet is becoming a toxic waste dump of radioactive materials. And that's why it's pointing into another galaxy. Because if we destroy this planet, where do we go? The, we know that there are other Earth type planets around other solar systems, but they're too far away for us to go. And the whole human species cannot possibly get to Mars and terraform it as an escape route to this planet. So we're stuck here with all of this radioactive waste that we're having to deal with. Now, we have been putting our head in the sand about it. We haven't looked at the real consequences of all of this radioactivity getting into our air, our water, and the soil. We can sort of see some of the mutations that are happening, and this cancer epidemic is definitely a result of all of these unstable particles. The Trilateral Commission supports this nuclear renaissance, and it has been in back of the whole nuclear regime. The Trilateral Commission was founded by David Rockefeller, whose father was John D. Rockefeller, who was also invested in Standard Oil. So the oil regime and the nuclear regime are the same regime. They bring us war. They brought us this toxic waste. And we have to overthrow them. I debate with a mentor of mine, Barbara Marks Hubbard, about whether it's evolution or revolution that is going to save the human species. I call it love evolution. It's kind of the melting of the two ideas together. There is a political component about it. That's why I say it's a revolution. In the spirit of Martin Luther King Jr., a nonviolent revolution that leads us 
to evolutionary consciousness. Because as long as we are stuck in the nuclear regime, then this nuclear renaissance will continue to cause war after war after war. Every reactor is a bomb. And we have three of these nuclear reactors in Arizona. This is outside of Phoenix. And there's a population that has grown outside of this area. And this is what's happened across the United States, that since these nuclear power plants were built in the 60s and the 70s, urban sprawl has created communities around these places. So the evacuation zones are very, uh, it's troubling how people in a accident would be able to evacuate and be safe from the fallout. United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission is a organization that really supports the nuclear industry. And the nuclear industry is this power elite that is control of the presidency. You have to realize that president since Jimmy Carter, who was a member of the Trilateral Commission, have been pro-nuclear. So this is what we're going to have to evolve beyond these kind of false organizations like this commission so that we can stop the bomb. I was born in 1956. During that whole era of the 50s, they kept on exploding nuclear weapons at the Nevada test site. The uh, fallout from these bombs went all across the United States. And it finally got to the point where they were detecting it in New York, that far away. And once they did, during the Kennedy administration, then they started saying, hey, we've got to do something. Maybe we should sign some treaties about having these uh, above ground tests. But these industries, General Electric and Westinghouse, who make up the nuclear regime, there are other companies, but those are like the Coke and Pepsi of the nuclear industry. They sold their reactors to Japan. And why the Japanese ever accepted these reactors is a real question. But in my research, I found out that after the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings, what actually happened was that the, the, the United States censored information to the Japanese about the results of fallout. So they never were able to really know what was going on, what had happened to them. If they had known all the facts, don't you think they would have said no nukes on the island that is known for its seismic activity, that the word tsunami is a Japanese word because of their tsunamis? So this is how the uh, nuclear industry was able to brainwash people throughout the world that nuclear power is safe. They even had a campaign, Atoms for Peace. And you might have heard about that. And they were trying to find some way to make this horrible, uh, weapon into 
have a, have a civilian purpose. So that's when the Adams for Peace campaign was developed. And recently, this is the Missouri River flooding this power plant in, on this river. It is incredible that this is happening at the same time that the Fukushima accident is still in critical condition. Right on this continent now, the power went out because of the flooding and the generators were actually able to kick in so there wasn't a meltdown. And this is in Nebraska. So I think the earth is trying to tell us something important. If we can hear it, if we can collectively hear the message that the planet is trying to give us, because it evolved us. It took, you know, millions of years, billions of years for us to evolve. If you look at us as part of the planet, it doesn't want us to go extinct. So wouldn't it be giving us messages that, hey, you better watch out. This energy will cause you to go extinct. It will pollute your water to the point you cannot drink it. It will contaminate the air, so it will give you cancer. And then, while the flooding is happening on the Missouri River and two nuclear power plants are being surrounded by water. This fire happens, and this is at the Los Alamos National Laboratory. And you can see the fire coming down to this laboratory where they experiment with pl plutonium. They're making warheads there. They have barrels of radioactive waste on site that could have been gobbled up by this fire. And a huge reaction could have happened, which contaminates America even more. So, God, I just want us to be able to get that critical mass together so that we can shut them down forever. That is the goal of the baby boomers, to shut down nukes. That's what we can do for our future. That's what we can do for our children and grandchildren and for the whole human species to come. This is the way we save the human species, is by shutting down this power and rebuilding the world with a different form of power. And it's this new thinking, what Einstein said. It won't be the same thinking that calls the problem uh, to find the solution. And the old power regime that calls the problem is the nuclear power regime. So don't look for them for answers. You're not going to find it. This is uh, this whole idea of sacrifice zones. This is the Chernobyl nuclear accident. This is one of the worst uh, disasters that have ever happened on the planet. And they call it the sacrifice zone, a zone of alienation, because no one can live there. If they do, they're risking their health. I think there's some vagabonds and homeless people that are living in this zone right now. But most people that care about their health and have another way of living, do not live in this zone. And it is illegal to take anything out of this zone because it is radioactive. And this zone will be hundreds of, contaminated for hundreds of years. Now, the sacrifice zone is what is going to happen in northern Japan. They're going to have hundreds of miles that are like dead zones. I was reading today that they have discovered two whales that were off the coast of Japan that are found to be radioactive. 
So it is affecting the Pacific Ocean. More sacrifice zones. These are our soldiers who have fought the war in Afghanistan and other countries in the Middle East. And so sacrifice is just part of this whole American uh, nightmare that we are in. It doesn't matter if these boys and sacrifice themselves uh, for war to protect our freedom, which really, if you start really understanding freedom, what is free about living in a nuclear-powered world? What is free about being caught in, in automobiles that needs fossil fuels and that we will go to war to protect this resource. And these wars, you know, are for oil, to protect our lifestyle. And I realized, you know, our lifestyle is criminal. We're protecting a criminal lifestyle. We've got to change. And this is more of the criminal lifestyle. This is the federal spending. And you can see that a large percent of it is going to the military, like almost half of our budget, when our money should be going to finding solutions to the crisis. Then there's the depleted uranium problem. Our soldiers are getting contaminated along with every place that they have used these weapons. The Gulf War Syndrome is part of this pollution of depleted uranium. And once it is out in the environment, it blows around. So eventually you could be hit by a particle of radioactivity from depleted uranium. And the consequences are that it destroys chromosomes and we are making mutants. And it's not the good kind of mutation that causes us to be more intelligent. It is causing us to de-evolve and causing so much suffering. If you look at those images of those children, and we are getting it. These are uranium tailings from the 50s. This is the Colorado River where Tucson gets its water. So it is seeping into our water supply and they allow a certain amount of radioactivity to be legal in our water, which is really just a crime, more of the criminal lifestyle. This is a funny uh, image of the food chain. Now uh, it's the, the plants have the radioactivity, then it goes into the animals and humans, and then we become zombies. You know, we're completely polluted. Fight against cancer. Yes, let's do that. Let's fight against cancer by shutting down every single nuclear power plant. And then also, it, nuclear power and nuclear weapons are one and the same thing. It's two sides of the same coin. So it's finding a way to convert uh, places like Raytheon, bomb makers, into building solar-powered satellites. And also this whole defense mechanism of this radar machine outside of C Seattle which it, it's just protecting this collective madness that we are involved with, this urban sprawl madness. And here is the uh, criminals at the table. And beside Obama is that criminal Richard Nixon, who is definitely a war criminal and should be tried. And the people who actually uh, are aiming the drones and who press the buttons in this uh, atomic age. And this is one of the schemes of how it protects us, which really it's uh, not protecting us, it's giving us cancer. 
So, uranium mining. It starts with uranium mining. And they are pushing to, there's, there's a moratorium on mining uranium in the Grand Canyon, uh, northern Arizona area. Well, there is a push by the industry to start remining in that area. So all of us Arizonans should be concerned about this and should push for this not to happen, that the mor moratorium on uranium mining last forever. Sprawl is over if you want it. Now this came from John Lennon and Yoko Ono. It originally said, war is over if you want it. But sprawl is the war. Urban sprawl is causing us to go to war. So it's time that we birth a new city design, a new pattern, because our, our cities are just a reflection of what's going on inside us. And if you look at our cities from uh, the, uh, um, a spaceship, it looks like cancer. It's spreading out with no real form. So that's why we need this new form. We need to be pioneers in this new way. This is our artwork of the in vitro fertilization because we have a new relationship with nature that we create life, that we can manipulate genes. This new power needs the new wisdom and the new wisdom is how to live in balance with nature and build our colleges. Our colleges are ecological cities. And this is a work by Dr. Paolo Soleri on how to build a completely sustainable city with no cars. It would be mass transportation for all. It would be a truly democratic city. So with that money that we have been spending making nuclear weapons and nuclear power plants, we put them into building our colleges. So we have a way out. And not just that, our colleges would allow us to live into, in outer space. So it gives us a way off of the planet as well. Another picture of the Arcasanti project that you can see the greenhouses and it would be solar power and wind power. And we need these experimental cities. Just like we have test sites, the Nevada test site, we need a test site to build an arcology. This is a wonderful idea. I saw a movie, Garage Warrior, I recommend it, everybody see it, about a wonderful architect who are building earth ships, and completely sustainable using recycled material. And it's a wonderful way of what we can do to help refugees who are refugees because of the global warming that is the result of living in urban sprawl. So there is a way out. There is a way out if we can have this consciousness shift. And I want you who are listening to this and understanding what I am saying to talk to whoever you're with, to your family members, to your dog, whoever you're with, and just say, hey, we can change this regime. This is a bad regime and we're gonna create a good world. So I want us to be able to birth this new order. All women come together. This, if you love your children, if you don't wanna have mutations, like we have seen in this show, then please band together and let's create the new society for generations and generations to come. We have galaxies to explore and it's time that we wake up that these missiles are wrong and it is us that have to change the missile regime. It's moving from patriarchy, it's creating a partnership society. So, blessed be.